Odds are, if you're watching this video, you're already somewhere along the way in your smart home journey. Maybe you only have a few devices at this point, or maybe you have dozens or even hundreds of devices and are already planning your next install. But are you also planning for the time when you have to make your smart home dumb again? Why might you need to do this and what kind of steps should you be taking right now? Hang around to find out more. Hi, and welcome to Resin Chem Tech. Now, my personal smart home journey started about five or six years ago, shortly after we moved into our current home. But I knew going in that we were only going to be in this home for about 10 years. The average American moves 11 times in their life and owns somewhere around three to five homes. So the odds are, at some point in time, you're going to sell your existing smart home. Maybe it's because you need to upsize or downsize or have a job transfer, or maybe you just want to get to a better climate in your retirement. And even if you stay in your home long term, not to be morbid, but odds are at some point in time, somebody else is going to own the home you're currently living in. Or as one of my good friends, Rich, and another smart home enthusiast pointed out to me, even if you have plans to will your house to a family member, are they going to have either the knowledge or frankly, the desire to maintain all of your smart home devices. So these are the things you might want to be thinking about now, whether you just have a couple of smart home devices or whole house full. If you've watched some of my other videos, you know my number one cardinal rule with a new smart home project is to not do anything that makes permanent modifications to the house. Now, sometimes this means I have to have some exposed wiring and I could make that look a lot neater if I was willing to uh, cut into drywall or rip up carpet, but I'm going to have to turn around and reverse that and fix all that when it comes time to sell my home because all these devices have to come back out again. But why? A number of you have said in my comments, why would you need to take all this stuff out? Maybe the, the new buyers will actually love some of this stuff like the custom bar lighting or the smart lock on your garage door. Could some of these things actually add to the value of your home? But let's stop and consider for a moment the one thing that nearly every smart home device needs, and that's Wi-Fi. And all these devices are currently set up on your Wi-Fi, your Wi-Fi name or SSID, and your Wi-Fi password. So assuming you're not going to leave your router behind for the new buyers, or you don't have to return your router to your internet service provider if they own it, what's going to happen when you take your Wi-Fi and leave? All these devices are going to stop working. You might think, well, I'll just leave these devices behind and the next buyer, if they really want to use them, they can set them up on their Wi-Fi. Well, not so fast. Why that might be possible to do with some commercial devices that have a factory reset button where you can set them up again. A lot of these smart home devices require Wi-Fi to get in to be able to change the password. And if you've taken your Wi-Fi, you can't connect to them in the first place without either taking them apart and putting them back on the computer and reflashing them or going through a whole bunch of steps that a new buyer probably isn't going to want to do and may not have the savvy or capabilities to even do that. So now add in a Zigbee hub. And if you happen to be using Home Assistant to control and automate a lot of these devices, you have a pretty small pool of potential buyers who are actually going to be able to make use out of the smart devices that are currently in your home. And if these devices require a cloud account, it gets even that much more complicated. You now have to disassociate that device from your cloud account. And now the, the new buyers have to not only set it up on Wi-Fi, but now they also have to create that cloud account to get that device to work. And if you've installed anything like in the wall smart switches or dimmers, any home inspector worth his salt is going to notice these and note them. Even if you've done everything 100% up to code, he's still going to make a note on the buyer's report and the buyers may ask you to remove and replace that equipment before they buy your home. The last thing you want to be doing is trying to scramble at the last second to replace all these devices while you're also in the process of trying to pack up and move yourself. Probably much better to have a plan in advance to be prepared to restore your home back to its own factory standards before you list and put it up on the market. Now, how you opt to keep track of this yourself is totally up to you. Personally, any device I remove from the home gets labeled and put into a box with any notes that I might need to be able to put it back in place. Now, for things like smart plugs or little standalone devices like cameras, no big deal. Simply unplug them and take them with you to your new home. Or if you don't think you're going to need them anymore, factory reset them and sell them somewhere. 
But when it comes to something like replacing a light fixture or something permanently attached to your house, you may want to save that original component because when time does come to replace it, you may have a hard time finding something that fits exactly like the old one did. Or if you've done something like I've done and taking a four-way switch and upgraded it with three different smart home devices, I took copious notes including lots of photos and color coding all of the wiring so I could put the standard devices back at a later time. For other devices that might actually impact the functionality of a house, like a smart thermostat or maybe a video doorbell or a smart lock, might be something you want to talk with the buyer about. Uh, in my case, however, I did save the original thermostat, doorbell, and lock, and I do plan on putting all those back in place, really, whether the buyer is requesting it or not. So that's it. It's just a quick little video to encourage you to think about down the road as you plan your smart home about how you're going to handle the situation when it comes time to sell and move someplace else. So let me know down in the comments whether your current smart home planning thinks about down the road about what you might need to do when it comes time to sell your home or whether it's something you really just don't worry about right now. If you found anything in this video that you thought might be helpful or that you liked, do me a favor and hit that like button. You can also hit that subscribe button if you'd like to see more of my content and ding that little bell icon if you want to be notified when I release new content. As always, I'd like to say thank you for watching and I hope to see you soon.